In the last lecture, I explained magnitude distortion and now we will understand phase distortion. The knowledge of magnitude and phase distortion is important to understand distortionless LTI system. In the next lecture, we will derive the conditions for an LTI system to be distortionless and you can only understand the conditions if you have clear understanding of magnitude and phase distortions. We have already completed the magnitude distortion in the last lecture and now we will have discussion on phase distortion. First I will explain what is phase distortion and then I will give one example of phase distortion. The phase distortion will be there if the system provides unequal amount of time delays. In the last lecture, in case of magnitude distortion, there was unequal amount of amplification but in this case there is unequal amount of time delays and because of this reason sometimes we call phase distortion as delay distortion. So the phase distortion will be there if the system provides unequal amount of time delays to different frequency components available in input signal. So the definition of phase distortion is similar to the definition of magnitude distortion. There is one change and the change is unequal amount of time delays. In case of phase distortion we have unequal amount of time delays and in case of magnitude distortion we have unequal amount of amplification. So let's quickly move to one example. In this example we have the LTI system and this particular LTI system is providing the phase delay. Let's say the input to the system is xt and the output is yt. xt is equal xt is equal to sine omega 1t sine omega 1t. We took the same signal in the last lecture also plus sine omega 2t. So this is our input signal and you can see we have different frequency components. In the first term the frequency is omega 1, in the second term the frequency is omega 2 and omega 1 is not same as omega 2. So we have the input in which there are different frequency components available. Now we will focus on the output. The output yt is let's say equal to sine omega 1 t minus t1. Let's say this particular system is providing a delay of t1 to the first component of the input signal that is sine omega 1t and the same system is providing the delay of t2 to the second component of the signal xt that is sine omega 2t sine omega 2t. So there are two delays provided by the same system depending on the frequency. When frequency is omega 1, the delay is equal to t1. When frequency is omega 2, the delay is equal to t2. So the output yt is equal to sine, sine omega 1, the delay is equal to t1. So we have t minus t1 plus the second input term will become sine omega 2 t minus t2. So one thing here you can see is that the amplitude is same. The amplitude of the two terms is same but the delay is different or you can say the phase is different therefore we use the term phase distortion. If you open this bracket you will find we have different phases and we can say this because t1 is not same as t2. t1 is not same as t2 and this is because of the system we are using. So this is what you should know about the phase distortion. So we have completed magnitude distortion and phase distortion. Phase distortion is also known as delay distortion. So in the next lecture we will find out the condition for an LTI system to be distortionless.